Welcome to this week's episode of the Top Producing Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Shane Carvalho. And I'm your co-host, Michael Jin. Well, co-host, how are you? I'm uh, doing quite well. Um, you know, we, we, we usually, for those, that li- for those that listen to the podcast, you know, Shane and I usually like to do a, a catch-up episode, you know, every so often, just so you guys get a sense of, you know, what's been going on in our lives and get to just learn a little bit more about us. So, you know, this week's episode, we're going to do another one of those catch-up episodes. I'll give you a little hint for about one of the things we're going to talk about. I came prepared with a little... Uh... <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, wow, he's <laughs> branded a little differently today. I was wondering about it. I mean, you get, you know, obviously I'm excited. It's football season's here. One more week of preseason and then we're fully in the mix. We we are. And, you know, you and I are both Niners fans. And, you know, over the time that I've gotten to know you, uh, one of the coolest things is, you know, just I've learned about you is just how big you are into not just the Niners, but football and especially fantasy football. So I missed out. That's my bad. I missed out this year. You tried to invite me. I missed out. Um, But like, you know, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about kind of what you guys do for fantasy football? Because it's it's pretty cool. Like how how big you guys go with all this stuff. You know, it's interesting because I first got involved like when I was really young. I mean, I was what 1999, which is what, 24 years ago. I was in my early 20s. And that's when I first, I've always been a big football fan, but, you know, fantasy football really put a spin on it because it's like you have your favorite team, Mm -hmm. but now you're building a team of players from different teams that, you know, depending on how they produce on the field every week, you get points for that. And then you compete with your friends. And so one of the oldest leagues I'm in is with one of my best friends, Manny. We've had this league going for 24 years. Wow. This is our 24th season. And, um, you know, a lot of these guys have, gotten married and settled down over the years and they have kids, family, they're busy, they all work. And uh, actually, this has been a way for us to keep in touch. Like during football season, we all kind of, you know, we're in touch about the competition. And then we try and get together right before the season starts and do a barbecue and pick our players and stuff. Um, But I actually got invited a couple of years ago, a guy that's become one of my best friends. In fact, our fellow whiskey connoisseur. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bourbon connoisseur, you know, Mark. Yeah. You know, Mark actually, I got invited into his league and his league was like the medical professionals league, like the local, you know, doctors and surgeons and RNs and, you know, people in the medical field that work with them. You know, he's been an RN for many years. And uh, anyway, um, this guy, like full time job, family, kids, everything else, like he's created a website, like a logo. There's (laughs) trophies. There's all these special competitions within the league year. And then there's additional competitions now and it started with one league now he's up to 12 leagues there's about 150 players and he just like i mean we created that fun like you know the fundraiser golf tournament you're part of Mm -hmm. we created that foundation for charity well it was his brainchild i mean i i'm part of the committee i've supported and helped out but um you know created that a couple years ago and you know that's in honor you know of a couple different you know organizations that he wanted to support yeah um, you know, one was for a famous surgeon that passed away that was really well loved in the community. Another one was for a friend of his for the 22Q Foundation. And so he's taken fantasy football, getting the guys together and girls. And because uh, there are some, you know, it's not guys only. Right. It's open to women right. as well. Yeah. Although women make a very small fraction of the leagues. But still, um, you know, he's taken this fun game and he spun it into something that it's good for networking good for building friendships, socializing, and it's even good for helping the community. So yeah, fantasy football is, uh, you know, it's, it's not just a a game for adults anymore. It's, you know, it's actually gone a lot further than that. Well, one of the things I I do play, I mean, I, I play kind of just for fun with, with some friends, but you, you kind of brought it up is fantasy football is actually, it is a great way to keep in touch with people. Cause I, I mean, I play in a small league. I actually, I'm, I'm kind of the commissioner. I organize it every year and there's only about like eight or 10 of us every, any given year, but we're all like spread out across the country. Like no one is actually right. here in the Bay area. I'm probably the only one here in the Bay area. We have people down in Southern California, people over in New York. Um, yeah. And to your point, East coast. Like, East coast yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a great way to bring people together. Like we'll always do, we'll try to do the draft on zoom. So we're all kind of together and we're doing the, the, the draft. Um, and then afterwards, just like every week, it's 
yeah, you want to win, but it's also kind of fun to just like, you know, trash talk each other a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So some of these things that trash talking is insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, but yeah, like my brother is in a couple leagues with me and you know, he lives, well, I have three brothers, but one of my brothers that's in the league, he's on the East coast, he's in North Carolina. And so, yeah, we'll like, when we try to coordinate the drafts, we have to factor in the different time zones and stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. I, I, football season's like my favorite, you know, time of year, you know, I just, I, I love it. It's a sport that, you know, I, I played football and of course I'm a Niners season ticket holder. So it's like, I, you know, love going to the Niners games. There's 10 home games every year. Yep. And then I also like to try and catch games away when I can. And um, yeah, I mean, play it, follow it, fantasy football. It's just, it's definitely a sport that I'm very, very much into. Football is one of those interesting sports, at least for me, where, you know, if I'm watching it on TV or I'm like, you know, watching it live, I feel like I can actually watch. I mean, obviously I'm a Niners fan, but I can, I feel like I can watch like any game and I would be into it and excited about it. And I can't really say that about any other sport out there, like basketball. I mean, okay. I'm, I live in the Bay Area, so don't hold this against me, but I'm a huge Lakers fan. I will only watch Lakers games. I can't watch any other basketball team. Baseball, like I'm a Giants fan, same thing. I, can't, I can only watch Giants. I can't watch any other sport. Football, I can watch any game that's on, and it's just as exciting. Yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah, so basketball, I grew up a Lakers fan, yeah. you know, and I just, you know, I've supported the Warriors because in the Bay Area, but I mean, I've, you know, I, I mean, I have, I collect sports memorabilia too, which you haven't, you haven't even seen my whole collection. No, I haven't yet. I've been collecting stuff for years. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I mean, like I got like, for instance, like Magic Johnson. I mean, I got his autographed jersey nice. and I mean, I got like a bunch of like, you know, I got some Lakers stuff and, you know, football. I, believe it or not, like, and I don't want to alienate any people that listen to our podcast, <laughs> but baseball is boring as hell. I Like baseball, like yeah. I have a hard time. Like you're like, oh, yeah, I like my Giants. It's like, you know, like. Believe it or not, I love golf. I play golf, maybe because I love golf and I love baseball, but I love watching golf. Like some people are like golf's boring, puts you to sleep. I'm like, golf's actually got more action than baseball, in my opinion. <laughs> Cause someone's always hitting the ball. They're not like missing the ball. Right, right. Like you're not sitting there watching people miss the ball, right, you know? Right. And it's like the golfers, I mean, they limited they're limited to chasing the ball because you know their caddies will chase the balls for them. So it's like in golf, it's like always an action. There's always action. Like, it's like, and it's, I don't know. It's just more exciting. I mean, well, it, I know this is a matter of opinion. Well, but. no, no. And I, I don't actually disagree with you. I like, I've gone to a few like live baseball games and like, I usually find myself walking around and enjoying the ballpark more than actually paying attention to the game. Like in the past, I really kind of, I mean, I'd follow the Giants kind of just casually. And then I would really mm -hmm. get into the games. Those like, you know, those odd years when they when was even years it was even years, right? Yeah. It was even years back then when they made the world series and won mm -hmm. like in the playoffs, it got a little bit more exciting. Um, but you know, what's interesting is this past year, I found myself actually more engaged with baseball games. Cause I don't know if you know this, like they introduced a pitch, a pitch clock. So now like a pitcher actually has a certain amount of time, like that he has to throw a pitch in. Otherwise, like, Otherwise, I, um, I think they call it, they call, I think they counted as a ball or something. Um, and so it actually, I found like, you know, earlier this year, I was watching a couple of Giants games and they were actually much more enjoyable to watch because the game just felt faster. And I think that was one of the things that was holding me back personally before, because it just felt like you're still watching there at the TV and like half the time the pitcher is like trying to get ready to throw a pitch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you're like, literally you're wasting your life. Yeah. <laughs> you're wasting away your life. Like yep. what? Like seriously, yep. I'm going to watch this guy like flex his body in different directions yeah. and look at a ball. Yeah. He's looking at the ball. Yep. He's talking to the ball. Be the ball. Be the ball. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like I, don't know, I mean, like, like I said, I'm sure I'm, people are going to hate on me for this, but I'm just not, baseball is just not exciting I, to me. You, you know but, how, you know how sometimes you get on social media and like you, you, you do like a meme worthy like event. I, I think I just, I, I think that one right there could eventually turn into a meme. Beautiful. Oh wow! Yeah, I shouldn't <laughs> expose myself like that. In a good way. In a good horrible. way. In a good way. Um, but I mean, let's let's talk a little bit just about kind of our love, like for the Niners. Like, how are you feeling about the season this year? You know, it's interesting because this. It seems like, you know, defense has been pretty consistent the last few years, but here we are with quarterback controversy. Like, we just we have not had 
a solid quarterback since Steve Young. Right. <laughs> right. Yep. Like, is it really that far well, back? Would you since we've had a stable? What would you think about Jeff Garcia? I mean, he did well. He didn't take us to a championship. Oh no, I enjoyed Jeff, but I think it was only a couple seasons, yeah. right? Yeah. Like what, two seasons maybe? Two or three, yeah. That's remember. right. Jeff did come after him. Yeah. Um, Alex had maybe one season that was halfway decent. But yeah, that one know, year just, we kind of went pretty deep into the playoffs, and then we lost. Yeah, but when but when you think about like like legacy type quarterbacks, yeah. or like when you think about here's my team's quarterback, like yeah. We, I think Young was probably the last one. Right? No, I agree. I think so. I think so. Yeah, like in my lifetime, it's been Montana and Young. Like those are, yeah. No, I appreciate it, Garcia. In fact, I actually have an autographed Garcia with a little mini helmet. Stuff, oh, that's cool. Like that's in a cool. plaque, yeah. this really cool like oh, box nice. thing. But oh, best part of the collection, the Montana signed helmet. Oh yeah. oh yeah. When I was in Vegas, I went to the man cave store. They had one on sale for thirty six hundred. Nice. So. I think originally mine was like 500. So I'm, I'm sitting pretty on that's that. Not, that's really I mean, I'm not going to sell it, obviously, but it's cool to have, you know, Montana autographed helmet. I like Montana, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think the Niners, like, it's sad, like, because of what happened to them in the championship game, there's a new rule now where teams can dress three quarterbacks. Yeah. Yep. It's really, I don't, and this is like even me in my life in certain situations, like, I don't mind losing. As long as like, you, you know, you have a chance, you were in, <laughs> you're in it. Yeah. It's like, like when you run out of quarterbacks in the championship, in the championship game, first, there's that bad call down that left sideline, yep. which they yep. should have challenged that right yep. away. That changed yep. the tone of the game. Yep. But then yep. it was so painful. That game wasn't even a game. Like, I feel like they should have called it or postponed it or done something. Like, I feel like that just like, that was even like fair competition. No, it wasn't, it opinion, wasn't even you know? close. I mean, at, at yeah. that point, it's like, you know, you even like, honestly, after we lost Purdy, like Josh Johnson, like he's, he's a good probably mentor, but I, I mean, he, he, he couldn't do much. And then once he got knocked out, it's like Purdy tried to come back in. He can't throw with that arm. And then all of a sudden you have like Christian McCaffrey doing the wildcat. And you're just like, Oh my gosh. I think there's a part of me. That's always like maybe the optimistic sports fan. That's like, Oh gosh, maybe with Shanahan and his offensive mind, they could pull something off. But it's just like every single play was just so brutal to watch. Well, they were just—I mean, the way things had gone down with that bad start and everything. I feel like if things had gone different, but no. So that like the new rule, like I mean, I'm hoping we're not going to be losing quarterbacks left and right. But we don't even have like I'm glad that we brought what's his name from Carolina Sam over. Darnold. You Sam know, Darnold. yeah, he's looked okay to be a backup. Like, but I mean. Dude, no offense, but number five has no place on our team. You know, I, I was I'm about not... to ask you what your quarterback ranking was going to be, but I think I know what it is now. <laughs> yeah. So pretty, pretty well, dude. Once again, that's what I'm saying. The Niners' quarterback situation. You have, you know, once again, like I mean, dude, like we've had horrible. Like we've drafted quarterbacks that were supposed to be great. We just haven't drafted good quarterbacks. It'll it'll be interesting with Purdy because, I mean, they, dude, use the last pick in the draft last year for God's sakes. That was irrelevant. a lucky draft yeah. pick. <laughs> that was a lucky draft pick. That was not like you can't even give the Niners a lot of credit for that because that was, oh, well, maybe we'll just take this kid. You know, it's our last pick. What the heck, <laughs> quarterback? And he and he and he worked out. But it, it'll be interesting to see him this year because you know how they all like part of. Like he obviously went on an incredible run last year. It'll be interesting this year to kind of see like, I mean, because the league always adapts, right? And teams always adapt. It'll be interesting to see how defenses adapt to him this year. And then can he Whoa. adapt right back? Well, but dude, look at the weapons they've built around him. Yeah. And now he's got a season under his belt. Like I hear you, like what you're talking about with adapting because it's like the West Coast offense and he pretty much just flows. He's not one of these standout guys that's running everywhere. Yeah. I think that when you think about adapting, you got to think about these super mobile quarterbacks or these super human, like giant, like six foot eight, like towering, like beefy quarterback that can barely take down. Whatever. I mean, when there's like, I think it's like the, like the unicorn type players that you really have to adapt to. He's pretty fundamental. So I don't think they're going to have an answer for him because of all the weapons. If he's even going to be better and more seasoned and more mature and he gets the ball out of his hand in a timely manner, like what are you going to do? If he can orchestrate and run that offense with a bunch of healthy starters, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think you're right. I think he's not the type – he's not the unicorn type quarterback. I mean, it, it, it will still be interesting to see because I – I mean, I, I think I've seen like little breakdowns of kind of his his habits, right? And he tends to want to – I think they ro- he rolls out in one direction over the other if he has to, right? And so it will be right. interesting to see like do do defenses start forcing him to – I think he, I think rolling out to his right is where he's uncomfortable. Like the defenses start forcing him that direction, and if so, like you know, how does he react to that on like on the run? I mean, I think you're right. I think for the most part, with all the weapons that we have, like Shanahan's going to scheme, you know, a lot of these all these weapons open because you can't guard them all and you can't double team them all. And like between Debo, IU, Kittle, and like McCaffrey, it's like who who are you going to want to take away? You take away one, you still have the other three. Um, our offensive line is going to be interesting too. Our right tackles kind of, I mean, he's been with the team for a while, but this is his first year starting. So we'll see how he adapts. That could be the big question mark. Well, I mean, offensive line, we'll have to see how it goes, yeah. but um, yeah, our, you know, well, you can name them if you want, but <laughs> I just don't even like saying the name because I'm so disappointed, but and I don't want to be trashing anybody, but you know, our other quarterback, like, I mean, horrible in preseason, like just, like you got to be able to look good in preseason for God's sakes. I mean, it's not even, you're not even playing defensive starters. This is like being at practice. <laughs> like he got sacked like three times the first game, first game, like in the first, like three or four series, he's a mobile quarterback. What the heck dude, throw the damn ball away. I mean, of course now I'm like a couch quarterback or whatever here. Cause I'm like a backseat driver. Like I can't even do what he does, but, but I'm just saying like, for we're not i'm not even trying to compare myself but i'm just saying like for what he's supposed to be and symbolize and for how he was drafted another huge disappointment and i really thought he was going to be gone this year i mean it, it i mean i think if if they got had gotten the the picks that they wanted he probably would have been it's interesting like i i think i'm a little i'm not in that same boat with you right now cuz there's a part of me that's like i mean i still hope like he He's still young. It's crazy. I think he's still the youngest, even though he's been in the league for like three years, he's still younger than Purdy. And I think everyone knew like coming out of college, like he did not have enough steps under him and he still hasn't. Um, but you know, like the, this past game, um, on, on Saturday, like, I mean, he started slow. He threw that stupid interception on a screen pass, but outside of that, I mean, he, he had a couple of great looking throws and great looking drives at the end. I mean, he set up the game winning one. Um, so there's a part of me that's still like hopeful for him. Like, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be with this team primarily because Purdy, if he's continuing to be solid, like there's probably not going to be a shot for him, but you know, hopefully he hopefully does develop into a good quarterback. I mean, the skill set's yeah. there. Well, I really think we'll make the playoffs. I think that we'll have a very good team. Yeah. And, um, I just, they just need to resolve the, yeah, the quarterback thing. I mean, Hopefully Purdy can start from day one yeah. and hopefully he stays healthy, you know, and hopefully the bulk of the team stays healthy. But yeah, I, the energy at those games and at Levi's, like I, I absolutely love being a 49er fan. Oh. I've been a 49er yeah. fan since I was a kid. No, it's pretty incredible. That's and you have, you have, you have some pretty amazing seats. Like I've even gotten a chance to like, you know, thanks for bringing me to some games. I got a chance to meet like kind oh, of, of the course. people around you and like, yeah, everybody's like super cool. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And you know, I'm glad that, it's funny because I was originally going to get, you know, my own just seats from the beginning when they built the stadium. But yeah. those licensing fees and everything else, I just couldn't fathom spending that kind of money. Yeah. And then I had the opportunity to partner up with a buddy of mine a couple of seasons ago. And then he decided that he wanted to be bought out. And uh, and so then I, you know, I worked my way into these seats for a pretty good deal. And they're like you said, they're they're pretty decent seats. Oh, they're great you know? seats. They're absolutely great. They're, they're not the they're not the quarter million variety. Thank God. But um, but I'm happy with what we got. You know, I know people have club seats that pay like ridiculous amounts. Of oh money. yeah, sure. But like, I mean, I know your seats. your seats are great because they're in the lower bowl. Like they're not like they're not like like all the way at the end. I I think it's it's just a great viewing vantage point. You know, well, especially when the players are on this half of the field. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, what I love is I love to be able to see players or even at concerts like. I love to be where I can see it with my bare eyes. Yeah. Like if I can't see it from my bare eyes and I look at a screen, I'd rather be at home. 
Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, no, I hear you. If I'm going to be at a live event, like I want to see the live event. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, you don't want to be so far up, you can't see anything. You're you're better off. Like, <laughs> being at- Remember the playoff game in the rain where we got soaked? Oh, that was that was awesome. That was actually so yeah. much fun. Yeah, no, dude, that was, it was great with the playoffs and everything. Yeah, I, mean, I remember because you were making fun of me for my uh, my water boots uh, and everything else. <laughs> it paid off. Dude, it paid I off mean, at the end. It's like you didn't get the memo. I thought you thought you were going fishing. It's like this guy <laughs> picking freaking fisherman. Like we're supposed to go to a Niners game, and you're like a city boy, and then you look like you're going fishing. I, I know, I know. I was that, that's how much that's that's how much I was dying to go fishing with you, which we finally got done. Um, <laughs> I'll have to probably provide that photo for this podcast so they can throw it on YouTube, or at least that video, so people can see kind of how crazy it was that day. Yeah, no, uh, I. Uh, but no, looking forward to the season and. Excited about fantasy football with the guys. I mean, I got to be careful because it can become a distraction. It's so time consuming if you allow it to be. Mm-hmm. Like I have a lot of my stuff on autopilot. So make sure lineups are set and everything, you know, yeah. like I have auto yeah. updates and stuff. Cause I, you know, but sometimes you get caught, like, you know, like yeah. the report comes yeah. out yeah. who's on waiver wire, yep. making your waiver wire pickups and really thinking through your lineups and stuff. It's like, yeah. you know, it's pretty much for fun. There's a little bit of money on the line on some of these, but it's, Pretty much just for fun. It definitely won't replace my work income, so I shouldn't <laughs> spend so much time, energy there. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. Now, if you're watching on YouTube or streaming this on your podcast platform, if you could do us a favor, leave a comment down below and let us know where you're listening or watching the show from today. It greatly helps with the algorithm and helps us get reach out to more people who need or want to hear what we have to say. We greatly appreciate it. And now back to the show. Let's pivot a second and just kind of talk about what's coming up this week. Like, I know you're heading down to Phoenix. Yeah. So for, it's interesting because for the construction, you know, my guy, the truck that we last got him, it's on his last legs. And, um, you know, we've been trying to find, you know, a, a good, a good heavier duty work truck, you know, a flatbed, like a big heavier duty truck for the kind of work that we do. And, uh, you know, I went back to a dealership that I had bought a previous truck at about seven years ago and uh, worked out a, ended up being a really good deal. It's funny because like the way I work in real estate and build relationships and stuff, I became really good friends um, with one of the managers there and um, we we're able to put together a really good deal on this truck and they really value my business and coming back. And uh, anyway, long story short, um, you know, do what I did last time. I mean, you fly to Phoenix, they pick you up at the airport go do the paperwork and you drive it back. Um, I'm only going to drive it back to LA. I'll spend the night in LA and in the morning, my, you know, one of my guys, my main guy, construction guy, he'll come down and grab it and he'll drive it the rest of the way. But I'm going to do that initial six hour drive across the uh, desert that won't be flooded by the tropical storm anymore. The muds, they had slides. They closed those highways. It was a mess in the desert with Hillary. That's crazy. Um, But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I just, I got a good deal on that. He also needed a dump trailer. Went back to the trailer place down there and got a screaming deal as well. Nice. I mean, I obviously here, like I try and support local business and get deals for myself for the business. So like I bought like my real estate vehicle. I bought it here locally at, you know, Cadillac GMC, you know, the Escalade. But, uh, you know, for this work truck stuff, like just there was not a lot enough options here. And then things seem to be really high here right now. And, you know, going to Arizona on these two things, it's saving me, you know, I th- when I did the math about almost $20,000, which that's substantial. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that is a, yeah, that is a good amount. And then because it's the LLC, it was great to see the financing available for the truck because of the LLC. And what's nice, it doesn't report to your personal credit reports to your business credit. So it doesn't over leverage your credit. Cause that's one of the issues I have with the multiple businesses is that you end up, you know, really hurting your personal credit. If you put too many things, right on the credit. So yeah, so that's what's happening. And then once again, using the rewards to fly. Um, it's funny. I hadn't tapped into my American uh, airlines because I always fly American Delta. Airlines. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, remember we were talking about like, I have the city miles. Yeah, card, that's right. Okay. And, uh, but I don't use it that often. Like, and I don't fly American that often, but Delta would only have a layover. Couldn't get me to Phoenix early enough. So I happened to see that American had a flight and I'm like, I was about to pay for it. I'm like, wait a minute. I got my rewards. Like what the heck? So, Dude, I pulled up my rewards and it's 11,000 miles and $5. And then from LA back here, 
I already got upgraded to first class, 10,600 miles. Nice. From LA back. Nice. First class. Nice. Like it's, so it's like, you know, and then the truck is a diesel and it's got a, because it was a special order that got canceled. Yeah. Has an upgraded fuel tank. It it holds forty gallons of diesel. Wow. Okay. What Literally will not have to stop at the gas station. What is it typically? Um, twenty four. Oh wow. Okay. So that's that's a great. Like okay. Yeah, that's a lot, dude. That's, that's a lot, a lot yeah. of fuel. Yeah. Well, it's also about two hundred fifty bucks to fill up. So. I <laughs> <laughs> don't want to be. You know, probably don't want to. You know, do that too often right, either. Right. But, <laughs> No, that's, but yeah. that, I mean, I think that's really cool. And like, I mean, I, you know, when you shared that with me, it's, it always impresses me, like, just like how you go about just building like trust and relationships with people just by having conversations with them, being yourself. I mean, I know you were talking about the story with the finance manager. You kind of just were sharing your story. You guys connected and all of a sudden it's like, bam, he's giving you this killer deal because, you know, you guys established that relationship super quickly. Yeah, and he values the relationship, values the fact that he'll probably get repeat business again. And yeah. um yeah, and that and the thing is, and we've talked about it on other episodes and just in general, like it's not fake. Like I'm authentic. Like I am genuinely interested in getting to know people and conversating. It wasn't even like any kind of ploy. And he could see the authenticity. Yeah. And so, you know, he totally like connected. In fact, you know, like this afternoon he messaged me and said, Hey, you know, we'll have one of the sales guys there waiting for you at the airport in the cell phone lot. So just text us as soon as you land. And, uh, you know, we're there. I just want to confirm, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's like, wow, talking about customer service, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, I just, so yeah, I mean, the, the relationship building is not one dimensional. Like I build relationships only for work or for real estate. Right. No, it's like no, it's just, when you love working with people and you love people, like you just, you're constantly connecting and talking, dude. I meet people like we've talked this about this before too. Like I meet people on the airplane all the time. Yeah. I mean, I've met like the coolest people, like, you know, sitting in the airplane, especially like you get upgraded to first class a lot. It's always really interesting because a lot of people that fly in first class are frequent flyers or people that are usually higher level business professionals. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get randoms of course, but I'm just saying like, you know, I've met, you know, like, like real estate investment people I've met CEOs from different companies. I met a CEO from a big solar company. Like you just, really met some really cool people yeah. and have made some contacts like connected on LinkedIn, shared contact info, whatever. And it just, it's so cool. Where like, like um, on my last trip back from LA a couple weeks ago, um, there was a video guy next to me with a camera and he was in the, you know, in the jet bridge filming this. So anyway, some famous um, Mexican singer okay. was on the plane. They were traveling to another show. And so she, um, she was a, a star that was a star when she was younger, I guess, in some TV series or whatever. And then she'd been in a couple of movies and stuff. And then she was on tour for her, like her actual concert or singing career or whatever. And, um, you know, it was interesting talking to him and where he was from and, you know, what he did and how he got hired. And, dude, I'm super interesting stuff. Like, that's so like you're not usually on the inside on like people on tour. Right. Like, yeah. And tour, like, on. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't really. I don't know how that stuff works. Like, I don't, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm on this tour with her and, you know, we're, we've been traveling and stuff and that's fun. Cause I like to travel. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, I wish I could make some money doing something fun like that. Just, <laughs> you know, for a couple of months, yeah. just, you know, yeah. if it equated to, you know, what my worth is here, you know, <laughs> that'd be cool to travel around for a couple of months well, hey, I, with some well, famous people. I, I still have, I still have very high hopes and aspirations for you to start doing your, uh, your speaking tour. Right. So you'll, you'll eventually do that I'm yeah. sure, travel around. And I mean, you've already started doing a lot of speaking engagements and I'm sure there's going to be more to come. Oh, that, this will be, this will be fun. Yeah, for sure. I was actually thinking about that the other day. It's, it's fun to just go see new cities, yeah. you know, just rent, like just show up at new places and um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just, it's interesting because um, especially cities you haven't been to before, you think about what you think they're like, and then you get there. Like when I went to when I went to San Antonio a couple months ago, you know, when you think about San Antonio, you think about the San Antonio Spurs, yeah. and yeah. you know, like yeah. oh, established basketball team. Good, you know, I've just kind of had images because I've been to Dallas. I knew it was not as big as Dallas, but I, I don't know. I had images of maybe a little smaller scale Dallas or something, <laughs> or Austin. I was like way off, dude, like way off. San Antonio is not what I expected. I mean, I enjoyed it; it was cool, but I'm just saying it was like. 
so yeah, no, traveling is awesome. Traveling is fun. Yeah. But um, how about you with your like vehicle? Like that was cool. Your lease end, you know, vehicle purchase. Like I know is going to be driving us to the next Niners game. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I, uh, I, I was originally in a BMW X3. The lease ran, uh, the lease was coming up. So I needed to get into a new car um, and went to go test drive. And I just I absolutely fell in love with the, uh, the BMW iX. It's their uh, all electric SUV. Um, and I mean, this is not going to surprise you. Like, what did I fall in love about it with? It was, it was, I mean, I'm the engineer, right? Like freaking that. Thing. I, I was waiting. I was about to say <laughs> it, engineer's going to come that, in the next that sentence. That thing is freaking like, like driving a spaceship. Like the, like, okay. So I am a sucker for heads up displays. I, there's something about like, you know, I learned that yesterday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, really, dude? Heads up displays. Heads up displays. I don't know. It's just something about it. I, I just absolutely love it. This one, I this one certainly has that. The new BMW screen is is amazing. It's like it's all one interconnected piece. So you see like your speedometer and everything right in front of you, but it kind of cur it's a curved piece, it's a curved screen, and it also has like your your radio and you can control the climate and everything inside the car. Um, the other real cool thing about this car is it has the panoramic like roof and it's it's one of those roofs that's kind of like the we've talked about like you know my love for uh airplanes like the new 787 dreamliner when you go to the window there's no longer the shade that you put down you mm -hmm. press a button and you can change like whether it's like you can change the opa the the, 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 the opacity uh, opacity of the of the screen I, I don't i don't know english obviously but you can change how light or dark you want the screen to be right and so right. same thing in this car you press a button and you can make like the the panoramic roof either like lighter or darker, so you can like either see outside or you can completely block it off. And I just I didn't know that. That's cool. I, I, I didn't know that, that feature. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but no, it was it was it was it was yeah, an absolutely fun experience. Um, I mean, I I really appreciate again, kind of just relationships. I mean, you connected me with you know your your friend down in the Monterey dealership, and even though I didn't ultimately didn't end up going with her, it was like you know it was really great to. I have to say, it was really nice to be able to at least work with somebody who didn't remind me of a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're always trashing on car salespeople. Yeah. Sorry to all our friends that are in the car sales. Well, I mean, there's, I guess it depends on dealerships because I mean, I ultimately ended up going with my local like dealership here in the Bay Area. I mean, I, I went with it because they just had the color, like this blue, this beautiful blue green, like Blue Ridge Mountain color that I just fell in love with. But I mean, they're, they have a rep, this dealership has a reputation for being more of the car sales people, you know, and it's interesting. Like I find myself being more on edge when I was dealing with them. Like I've had experience dealing with them before. So this time, mm -hmm. like I literally went in, and I was like, and I, and I made sure I had, I kind of had to set the expectations with them up front because they're kind of, they, they, they're kind of a little wishy-washy sometimes in their answer and you can't lock them down on like one answer. And so sometimes, I mean, they just try to get you in, right? As soon as they get you in, they feel like they can close the sale. And so this time around, I learned from my last experience and I was like, no, like this is everything that I need to like get an answer to before I am willing to come in. <laughs> and, no, that was smart. Yeah. That was smart to hold out like that so you don't have to deal with all the BS when you're there. Yeah. And then it's like, if you don't want to comply with them, they try to break you down. Mm -hmm. They sit you there for hours. Yeah. They will leave yeah. you sitting at a desk for hours. You know, it's almost like you're in some freaking prison getting tortured or something I know, it's ridiculous right? it, it really is um no but i'm i'm like i'm super excited about the new car um it, it's it's rare like so like anna and i like she it's so funny she and i were talking like she used to not like bmws i used to not like bmws either um i got into the x3 that made me like a like a lover of bmw cars and then now like you know we both fell in love with this ix and now i think i've turned her into a bmw person <laughs> That's smart, you know, because, you know, down the line, you know, if yeah, never it becomes your lifetime partner, yeah. then, you know, <laughs> it would be good. You can have whatever BMWs you want because, yeah. you know, it's like it's like when you go to a restaurant and you like two things on the menu and your partner can get one. It's kind of like that, but with cars, <laughs> right? Like there's two BMWs you love. Now she those BMWs. So it's like it's like sharing an entree with your wife. I know. You know, I never, I, never, I didn't actually think about that, but that is a great point. <laughs> Where the hell do I come up with some of this stuff? I don't know. I guess this is a good point for the disclaimer. Shane does not use drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm I just, sometimes the random stuff I come up with, yeah, right? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no. So I, you know, obviously my, 
the the Mercedes that I have in the real estate business, that that one's that's the only vehicle I have on a lease because it doesn't make sense. My CPA doesn't let me do leases anymore. Mm. But that was part of a lease for a, for a trade when we got the Sprinter van, and uh, that's up in October, and I'm trying to determine, you know, the final numbers to see if it makes sense to buy out the residual yeah. and keep it. You know, yeah. just because it's been a good car and you know the service it's had and everything else, it's good on gas. And right now that car's hanging out in LA. Yeah. So when I'm down in LA, it's nice to have a car to run around in. But I gotta, you know, figure out um, what to do with that, and you know. It's, talking to Leticia about that last night. I was like, she's trying to figure out what makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, you know, she's thinking about her next car and, you know, she's thinking like Model Y Tesla. And so today when I met up with Carlos, Carlos has one that he custom ordered. Nice. Took eight months to come in. Oh, wow. It's a really nice model, Model Y. It's that gray color like the other BMW you should be. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like the other, kind of like the yeah, gunmetal yeah, like kind of gray, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a gunmetal gray and he's got like these cool wheels and, and then the steering wheel has some white on it and the, it's just, it's like, it's so cool. He's got all these spoilers and stuff. It's a cool, it's a cool car. But anyway, she's like really tempted to get something like that. Cause I was trying to convince her, go, Hey, this car's down there in LA, you know, just what about this? And so I don't know, we'll have to run numbers and figure out what makes the most sense. But usually I just dump these leases when they're done, when I had leases before, but now they like, now they're really strict before, like the dealership would walk through a checklist like, okay, we just need 500 off for the lease return or whatever. Now it's like they're all stringent and you get these stupid bills. Like the previous one I turned in, I got like some bill for like 5,600 or something. But it's like typically you're trading in for another lease. Yeah. So they'll even let you skip your last three payments and stuff. Well, because I'm just turning this one in, if I don't refinance it, I have to go all the way to the end of the lease. There's yeah. no three months early or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to hit you with this too. So my thoughts are like, if the residual is super low, but if I return it, I got to pay like five or six grand, then, you know, it makes sense. I'd rather not yeah, just keep it if you can. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's a great car. So, yeah, no, it's a, it's a dude, especially in LA, it's a great car to run around in LA. Yeah. You know, it's compact enough to be in and out of traffic and have good visibility and it's good on fuel. It's comfortable. It's super safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to park, yeah. you know, cause obviously you got a big city, Parking, like, you know, Escalade's a little more challenging. But, uh, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's funny how all of a sudden we both have all this movement with vehicles. I know it is, it is, it is quite funny, but it's kind of nice. Like, at least, you know, it's, it's nice that like the timing worked out for both of us and like we can kind of run scenarios and numbers by each other. Um, it's yeah. always nice to kind of get another set of eyes on things, um, versus trying to figure it all out yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, so for now, like, you know, that stuff's getting done. And then, you know, obviously aside from staying busy with work, then end of the month here, beginning of September, you got the fancy football drafts. And then the, right after Labor Day, I'll be up in Vancouver for EXP Con Canada, right. their first that's EXP right. Con in Canada. That's right. So I'm excited to go back up to, I love Canada. It's been a long time. Nice. That's awesome. And then we have, yeah. I already, I already got, I mean, it's going to be a busy, it's going to be a busy fall. Like with the conferences and everything else going on, dude. I yeah, I got like all kinds of stuff going on, and then my daughter's birthday later in the month, and then like there's just there's a lot of things going on, like the rest of August and into September. Do you, do you know what I'm looking forward to the things. most? Uh, me taking you to a 49er game. Close, close. Me taking you to Why Disneyland. <laughs> oh shoot, that's right. Oh my god, that's right. The f- it's taking me like the freak show. Oh my gosh! You know what I was oh, going to send you a picture of, uh-huh. and I totally forgot. Um, there was a car uh-huh. at Concourse this week that had a Star Wars plate Ooh. and a personalized. Yeah, it was. Uh, shoot, I wonder if I took a picture of that. But it was so interesting because it was like Luke Skywalker or something. Like it was just, it was cool. It was just I would thought about you. <laughs> But anyway, but yeah, so I know about your obsession with Star Wars, but then like, um, yeah, Disneyland, that's, that's going to be a little more of an acquired taste. <laughs> I I think I'm, I'm more than up for that challenge. Yeah. Well, you know, you and, you know, yeah, <laughs> so like your girl and, and me are kind of like the outsiders and then like you and Leticia are like the insiders. So it'll be, yeah, that'll be fun. I'll be in. Interesting what kind of adventures I get dragged into. If you if you thought I was a planner before, wait until you see wh- when I'm at Disney. 
<laughs> well, I will plan out those fast passes like no other. <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm not a big fan of a lot of rides. So it's like, yeah, you, you're going to have to like have me at the Disneyland tequila bar for a while before Dude, I can do well, like I mean, Space Mountain. Well, honestly, we can get, we're going to get, we're going to get some pretty, pretty good food there. Like on both, on both parks, like corn, the corn dogs there at Disney. I don't know if you've ever had them. They're freaking amazing. Um, Oh, are those diet food? Huh? Are those healthy? Are they healthy there? No, but you're a Disney. I don't know. It maybe hopefully it can be a cheat day for you. <laughs> it's funny that you say corn dogs of all things because believe it or not, growing up going to the fair here, uh-huh. corn dogs are my favorite thing. Oh, I didn't know like that. a good okay. fair corn dog. Uh-huh. So it's funny that's the first thing you mentioned. Well, I mean, it's int- like they like a lot of people don't know like where to get them, or for the longest time they don't know where to get them at Disney. There's only like, and that's how parts. you measure. That's how you measure the concessions at a fair or a park. How good are their corn okay. dogs? Well, I because if their corn dogs are good, then everything else is going to be great. Well, when we come back from Disney, we're going to do a catch up episode for sure. And I, I know I'm excited. I'm sure everybody else is going to be excited to to hear about your corn dog review. <laughs> I got to do more food reviews. I mean, clearly, like, I like to eat. It's pretty obvious. I don't know why I don't do more food reviews. I, I know, you should. You absolutely should. The corn dog awesome. review, that's, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, well, it'll be interesting to catch up after that adventure, you know, see if my face is still white, and if my eyes are still dilated from the crazy you stuff you guys put me there through. You go. <laughs> I think. Hey, there's been some fun things on there, dude. Like, we waited a long time that at California Adventure to get on that. Cars, cars ride when that was new that ride is absolutely amazing yeah yeah like you know my daughter wanted to go on that and it's like i dude that was such a fun like it took a long time to get on it once i did it was such a fun ride like that was i enjoyed that like i enjoyed that rush yeah and it's it's gonna be awesome i'm i'm i i i, I literally can say i think that's at the end of, through the through the rest of this year i'm looking forward to doing that trip with you and leticia you know the the pirates of the caribbean um, you know, Disneyland, that, that one of the old yeah, rides. I remember, yeah. I remember that as a kid and like, like it's a small world. And like, like I, like, I can't believe that those things are still there. And then the one that, but the biggest one that actually disappointed me was the submarine one. Cause when I was a kid, yeah. the, the sea life looked real. <laughs> yeah. Like I, everything's plastic and fake. Mm-hmm. I was so like, I felt like so betrayed from my childhood <laughs> oh, no. when I went in the submarine with Licia, like when she was smaller, yeah. like, I don't know, a few years, she's 16 now. So like, I don't know, like last time we went was maybe like six, seven years ago, dude. Like I was so like, that was probably the most disappointing of all was going in the submarine and seeing the fake sea life. No, I totally get it. Like I, the, yeah, it's like when you're an adult, how your perspective changes, like the same thing with, um, Autopia, which is like right next to that submarine ride where you can drive the cars on the rails, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. those are fun. Yeah, as a kid, that. you're like, oh my gosh, I'm driving a car. This is awesome. And then recently, like, you know, now that I drive, it's like you, you, you go on these rides and then you're just sitting there. It's like, man, the steering on this car is horrible. And all I smell is like gasoline. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Like, the steering is horrible. Yeah. And then um, I remember the Pinocchio ride or the boats. Oh, yeah. Remember the Pinocchio yeah. boats? Or... Yeah. 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 So, what I still remember from years ago. One of the ladies that worked on one of the boats fell in the water, dude. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like I still remember that. She was crying. They pulled her out, one of the employees, and uh, she was in tears. Oh I was gosh. like, that was crazy, that crazy. dude. I've never like, seen that before. And that water is probably like a dirty pond. Yeah. It's probably nasty oh, yeah. at the bottom. I'm like, sure I, I would have probably been traumatized if I fell in there. All right. Like. We we gotta we gotta get we gotta get some fun memories this time. I, I'm excited to actually take you to Star Wars Land and take you on some of the Star Wars rides. Dude, Star I did Star Tours before. Well, no, so you I mean Star Tours is great. I so when Disney used to have only Star Tours, um, they revamped it at one time with like Star Wars, like with actual like scenes from the Star Wars movies. And okay, I'm gonna get geeky on you here. Um, so each ride has like four parts, and each part has like three or four different different types of scenes that you can do. Right. And so every time you go on the ride, there's a different combination of four scenes. Um, and me being the star Wars fan, I I am like, I literally went on that ride for a while. I had an annual pass because I was down there for school. And so I would go to Disney on the weekends and I would literally just go on that ride every single freaking time until I saw every single scene. (laughs) 
but no, like now, like one of the newest rides they have, it's called Rise of the Resistance. If you like, if you like Cars Land, I think you're gonna love this ride. It's you sit in a you sit in a vehicle and there's no track. Uh -huh. It's a trackless system, and so it's pre-programmed. But they're gonna it, it, it's gonna feel like random to you, and you're like literally moving from like place to place to place, like immersed in the action. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool how like this, the, the latest technology that they use on this stuff now. Yeah. Well, I like how they changed up, like how there's four different storylines, whatever, to mix things up too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the people like people want to ride it more and it, it saves them from making like three more rides. They find a way to keep well, that exactly. ride. Like yeah. D Disney's, uh, Disney's pretty smart that way and in ingenious. Like that. It must be their engineers behind that. It's, it's the it's the Imagineers. I actually I went to business school with a guy that was a mechanical engineer that worked at Disney. He uh he designed quite a few of the the he designed he designed quite a few of the rides at Disneyland Hong Kong. Um, and it was kind of cool. He we got a chance to go. He took us once, and then we got into at, in line for uh, Big Thunder Railroad Mountain. And you know how like the queue lines they have like the themes and there was like photos and it was kind of cool because he showed us a photo. And he was actually in it. Um. So it's kind of nice oh, to cool. like go to a theme park and kind of get a little bit of the behind the scenes from a guy that like actually has designed these rides. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 I had a guy who, cause when I was in Seattle, like right after college, when I didn't, uh, it's with the national mortgage brokers there in the Bellevue area. Well, Redmond where Microsoft is, is right next door. Oh, okay. One of my yeah. buddies that worked with me in loans, yeah. dude, he had gone to college at UW and, um, he had studied, I forget exactly what his degree was, but anyway, he got recruited by Microsoft to go test video games. Oh my God. That was his job. Wow. That's like, dude, I remember that. And it, that's been years. And I still remember that. He was so excited. He left lending to go test video games for Microsoft. So I would take that hopefully he got himself a lot of stock. I haven't been in touch with him. Yeah. I'm in touch with some of those boys from back then, but I mean, it's been, I left, I left and came back home like 22 years ago. Oh, wow. It's been a long time. It has been. It has been. Yeah. In fact, two of my, my old roommate yeah. and another coworker friend of mine, both, died in the last 10 years oh so things change dude i mean things just you know things change quick things can change quick they, they can and all but, the more uh, important to kind but, of take uh, care of your health mentally physically yeah. right yeah and no, i've lost touch with a lot of those guys yeah but um anyway well no man it was good catching up but you haven't had any time to talk to me lately so i'm glad that <laughs> we had to catch we up, catch up, up on the this. podcast i mean it was it was fun well, football you were aware of some things yeah. but like yeah I was aware of some things. We just haven't had a lot of time. We haven't. So. so this was this was awesome, and it was good to catch up with you. Like football, football, cars, and Disney. I mean, I I mean, I, I guess that's all we. I know we like to recap our episodes now. I guess that's probably just the best way to recap. I mean, fantasy else? football, like, football, yeah, cars, yeah, new cars, yeah. and I mean, visiting Disney. I can't think of a better way to end it than there. <laughs> Another sequel to Star Wars would probably make your night. Uh, no, that might be a that might be a topic for the next sketch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it depends on who's doing the movie, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Thanks all for joining us this week. Yeah, and uh, obviously, when it comes to catching up, we could talk for hours. So, <laughs> hopefully, our listeners are still with us at this point. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening, and. Uh, Appreciate your support and uh, like always open to uh, feedback and advice and uh, any topics you want to hear about. So absolutely. And we'll catch you on the next week's episode of the top producing zone podcast. Take care. Guys. <laughs>